Hello, my name is Kylie Wheeler. Coronavirus disease 2019. Racialized police violence. Social distancing, public masking. What, what should health promotion do right now? What can we do? We need words and voices of urgency and inspiration to betrust our calls for action to promote health equity. But too much of our public health knowledge excludes and suppresses the embodied knowledge of the people whose words and voices we most need to hear. Our norms regarding knowledge, evidence, and data position poetry as inferior and cute. And when we have included poetry within health promotion, more often than not, it is a method of extraction, leaving its owners disembodied in the form of truncated quotes. But poetry, true poetry is praxis, illuminating, and liberating. This is the poetry health promotion needs. Poetry that can help the world breathe. Poetry that can heal. Health promotion science can be characterized largely as a positivist endeavor, and even with a strong and growing presence of work centered on the values and principles of decolonizing methods, the pervading epistemology remains unmistakably one of coloniality and exclusion. We've seen this in the use of poetry as method within health promotion. Generally, credentialed researchers extract information about people's health-related perceptions and embodied health experiences, then take their words, their joy, their pain, their grief, their love, their fears, their ambitions, their lives rendered in verse and proceed to disembody them, strip away their names, remove context, reinterpret, and ultimately reduce the person that spoke them to a quote in the title of a published journal, in other words. Researchers use their credentialed power to extract experiences to further fortify their power as knowers of things. Poetry as method represses people's capacity to introduce themselves to the knowledge world and instead produces them into existence as scientific artifacts for the edification of elites. This should not be the process nor purpose of poetry for promoting the public's health. This is poetry as epistemic violence. We need a decolonized presence of poetry and health promotion, not a colonial one. We need poetry as praxis. The fundamental element of praxis is that it is rooted in lived experience and that the knowledge of that lived experience cannot be possessed or known in the same manner by someone who hasn't lived it. In the context of health promotion, those who actually experience the burden of health inequities possess a unique knowledge of them and thus a unique power. We must honor their voice. We need poetry as praxis for the creation of counter narratives to push back on the hegemony of misrepresentation and epistemic violence that so often characterizes public discourse regarding health promotion. We've seen this hegemony play out in the language and narratives regarding COVID-19 and its discourse of who is at risk and vulnerable. And we've seen it in the coupling of health and safety and the discourse of the public as protests against race racialized police violence have unfolded. What we need in health promotion, perhaps now more than ever, is space for voices of counter-narrative to reclaim, reframe, and redirect knowledge toward acts of liberation. For example, to clarify that people are not at risk, they are risked. That communities are not vulnerable, they are violated. That health and safety are two separate things, and that perhaps nothing signifies the absence of both more than the murder of black men by police in broad daylight during a health pandemic while the public posts pictures. If ever there were a tool to open this space for counter-narrative within health promotion, 
poetry as praxis is it. But only if we learn to see and appreciate the poem itself as data, not just the codes and themes that the credential turn them into. In this way, health promotion can become an epistemically just endeavor, opening itself to the creative powers and full humanity of the people it espouses to be looking out for. Our very field depend on them and their words. We have no words, if not for theirs. <laughs>